Twin studies are an amazing asset to science. They are a unique natural experiment. Something you can do in humans that you can't do outside laboratory animals. It's the equivalent of a cross mating experiments in animals. Basically there are two types of twin. Identical twins who share all their genes and non-identical twins who share only 50% of their genes. Both types of twin share their environments to the same degree. So if you want to find out if any trait or any disease is dominated by nature or nurture, by genetics or environment, you compare the similarities of these two groups of twins. And if you see a greater similarity in the identical twins, compared to the non-identical twins, you know that that trait has to have a genetic component. And then you do some simple maths, which gives you a difference between the correlations, and you get what is called the heritability, which is another way of saying the proportion of any condition that's due influenced by genes. So on average, for most of the human traits we look at, we tend to see around 60% of the differences between people explained by their genes. And twin studies are pretty much the only way you can get at this figure, the only way you can separate nature and nurture. Because if you just looked within a family, at say a mother and a daughter, you might say some similarities, say that they were both on the large side or very short in stature, but you wouldn't know that's because they shared the same social conditions, the same um, food habits, malnutrition or overnutrition. So it's only by having these, this remarkable set of uh, these two sets of twins that are otherwise ident identical in every way except for the sharing of the genes that you can make these um, uh, clear distinctions between the two. And over the last uh, 25 years since I set up the Department of uh, Twin Research here at King's College London, we've made a large number of discoveries in many of the common diseases, many diseases that people thought before were just either due to chance or due to age, just a simple wearing out of the body. And some examples are uh, cataracts of the eye. When the eye uh, fogs over, we now know that has a strong genetic component. Uh, osteoarthritis is common in about one in three people. And most people know somebody, one of their parents having it. And that has a strong genetic component, as does back pain, which people thought, well, that'd be impossible that back pain, that's just a mechanical problem. But no, that is three times more genetically influenced than something like breast cancer. So our studies, um, along with other twin studies around the world, and there are perhaps six or seven large groups around the world that we often collaborate with, have made a very large contribution to understanding common diseases related to aging, but also moving into some other traits that people perhaps didn't think at all were genetic. Something like uh, your preference for food, whether you uh, prefer spicy foods or you like um, garlic. I personally thought that would be environmental, but it turns out actually that's quite strongly genetic. And whether you like Korean spicy kimchi uh, or broccoli, or you don't like it, often these are strong tastes turns out that our genes are behind them. Then that also means that um, whether you like salads or you like uh, fish and chips, unhealthy foods, junk foods, also has a genetic basis. So that was interesting. Then personality um, is another trait um, that has been known for many years. And um, in general, whether you're an optimist or you're an introvert, an extrovert, uh, whether you're very conscientious, anxious, neurotic, about 50% of that comes from your genes and about 50% comes from your environment. Things like cigarette addiction, um, alcohol addiction, 
how much, how much you drink, strongly heritable, strongly genetic. And then we have some other uh, interesting traits because we tested our twins uh, here at, at King's College just before the last general election when David Cameron was running for uh, Prime Minister and we asked the twins how they would vote and it turned out that voting conservative or voting Labour, so left wing or right wing, was 60% genetic. And so even something that we think is our free will turns out to be uh, have an influence of our genes. And perhaps the, the one fact that surprises most people about twin studies and something that we've also looked at was belief in God. Now religion, um, known as the opium of the masses by some, um, is obviously a very important uh, aspect of, of people's culture around the world, but it turns out that whereas your religious affiliation or whether you go to church or your mosque regularly is not genetic, that's a cultural um, trait, what is genetic is how strongly you believe in God and how spiritual you are. And studies that we've done and also done also in Finland, Netherlands, Australia and America show the same thing of a rate of a 50% heritability of belief in God. Now, what these, these studies all mean is that they're a starting point for the research in how you can actually find the genes underlying it. And so we can start by using uh, genetic testing, using a million markers across many twins or unrelated individuals, comparing these genetic markers with these traits, whether it's back pain, whether it's breast cancer, or whether it's belief in God. And you can find uh, the underlying genetic variants that explain these traits. And that's what we've been doing for the last uh, eight or nine years. And we've discovered at least 500 genes in at least 100 traits and diseases. And nearly all these studies are done as global uh, collaborative studies with colleagues um, all over the world. Some, st some studies as big as half a million people. And we've just uh, finished a study recently looking at hair color where uh, we took data from the British Biobank, combined it with um, some data from 23andMe, which is an American company that does um, population screening, people pay for having a test, looked at hair color, and it turns out we have hundreds of different genes that control our hair color, whereas we thought there were just uh, a dozen before that. So, these twin studies are a really nice way of starting off a new area of research, moving people to realize that nearly everything that distinguishes humans from each other has some genetic basis, meaning that we can understand the genes behind them. And that's why they're particularly exciting. Now, the other way of using twins, so I've told you about how you compare one with another, but if you take just the identical twins, the genetic clones, they're also fascinating because any difference between them can't be due to genetics, it must be due to environment. And we've also looked in this way at twins reared apart, twins where one is higher up on the social scale than the other, and we've looked at signs of stress, for example, and so that's the effect of being um, in a, a socially um, distinguished country where you have different social classes and the effects on health and whether one is married or unmarried things that are very hard to otherwise distinguish where one is overweight and the other is skinny um, or one is religious and non-religious uh, to look at those differences so that's a really nice model as well that you can use twins which is a bit like uh, doing a lifelong uh, clinical trial um, it, 
but this way you have a matched clone who's gone through life either smoking or not exercising or doing something that you can compare to. So that's particularly good and we've also been used it for something called epigenetic studies um, which is complicated but epigenetics is the study of how you can just switch on genes on and off a bit like a light switch uh, with these chemical signals and so even identical twins have different epigenetic signals which explains why even identical twins often die of different diseases and have um, rather different profiles and personalities. So in the future twin studies are really going to tell us a lot about ourselves. They've already told us how much we vary uh, from each other and why we explain that but I think we're moving away now from genetic determinism. We've gone through this last 10 years of saying genes are crucially important. We realize by studying identical twin pairs, the fact that they often go in different directions with the same genes shows that the genes themselves are not enough. There's many other factors that are playing on them that determine us. And so we're much more flexible than we believed. And I think identical twins particularly are going to be very useful for personalized medicine, showing us the limits of which we can predict uh, how someone behave based uniquely on their DNA and their genetic structure. Because by following these twins over time, we see very different trajectories. And the fact that um, if you follow them, they die of different diseases at different times, despite having the identical genes, tells you the limits of a purely genetic based prediction. So I think they're going to be really useful for us in forming us showing it's actually much more difficult to predict how humans end up than perhaps uh, we've been led to believe by uh, other scientists.